All Boys Town mother fears allegedly mentally unstable brother. Comedian distributes masks and hand sanitizers to vulnerable communities. COVID-19 lockdown sees a spike in domestic abuse globally. One psychologist explains why. In the region, in Trinidad and Tobago, one killed and three Venezuelans wounded in Maribel shooting. And internationally, COVID-19, UK death toll continues to rise. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I am George Gonzalves. Thank you for joining us. The Government Analyst Food and Drug Department, the GAFDD, has issued an immediate recall of the Puracil hand sanitizer from the local market. This brand of hand sanitizers only has 0.53% alcohol and not the 62% as stated on the labels. The department said this is well below the stipulated strength of at least 60% of alcohol as required for effectiveness. This constitutes a direct violation of the Laws of Guyana Food and Drug Act of 1971. In a press statement released this afternoon, the GAFDD said, quote, Consumers are therefore advised not to use this product since the expected results cannot be guaranteed, particularly for the sanitizing of hands during the COVID-19 emergency. However, the alleged distributors will be contacted and asked to make immediate contact with the department. Importers of sanitizers are asked to ensure labels of sanitizing agents are duly approved by the department and obtain the necessary license or permits before releasing for sale on our local market." End quote. The department also reminded consumers to always read labels carefully and to alert them if you suspect that you have purchased a fraudulent or substandard product. Guyanese comedian Kelvin Fortune, also known as Selfie Boss, is doing his part to help fight the spread of the novel coronavirus in Guyana. He and his team are currently distributing free face masks and hand sanitizers to vulnerable communities. Bibi Vakas has that story. In light of this great pandemic, a group of young people headed by Kelvin Fortune, better known as the Selfie Boss, has embarked on a project to make and distribute face masks and hand sanitizers to persons in vulnerable communities and the workers who assist them. We focus on our face mask and hand sanitizer because everyone else they are dealing with and food supplies and so on. We mostly want to deal with protecting themselves, protecting people. Um, we don't have much face mask, but what we do is we give to persons who are working in the community and who would have to go and do doctor checkups and those persons who might have um, hypertension, um, high blood pressure or diabetes and so on. The hand sanitizers are made and bottled by this group of about 100 persons using aloe among other essential ingredients. The materials for the face masks are gathered and given to a seamstress to be sewn. These items along with soap are then distributed free of cost to persons such as pregnant women and adults that has to go out to seek medical attention and working people. We have two locations next that we want to target. We want to target, there's a, spe a specific location behind Sophia and there's there's a specific location behind Sophia, and we also want to target Better Hope because they have, there, there are persons from Better Hope who are reaching out to us. They are saying that they don't have face mask and they are at risk. They don't have hand sanitizer. It's, they cannot afford it. If you would like to assist Calvin Fortune and his group in this effort, Persons can contact me on 661-4580, that's the same number that I'm using, or they can send me an email on selfieboss28 at gmail.com. For headline news updates, Bibi Vacas. Thanks, Bibi. The mayor and city council of Georgetown wishes to inform the general public of its revised hours of operation for the city's markets. Starbrook, Borda, Al Boys Town, and Kitty Markets will be open Monday to Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. inside and outside the market, while Sundays and holidays they will be open from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Don't go away after the break. All Boys Town mother fears allegedly mentally unstable brother. 
and COVID-19 and domestic violence. One psychologist explains how you can avoid this silent epidemic. Harry Dunter Zasco on 15 North Road between Camp and Wellington Streets. Quality products at low cost for every room in your home. 65 and 55 inches high send 4K smart TVs. Samsung French door fridges. Black and Decker appliances. Queen and King size Canadian made mattresses. German made pressure pots in 5 to 9 liters. 12 piece pot set, knife sets, cutlery sets and pans. Commercial fans. Samsung smart stoves. Canadian made 3 piece recliner sofa sets air fryers and Hamilton Beach hot and cold water dispenser. For that reliable, prudent and courteous traveling experience, your choice is G3 Cabs, located at 228-229 Aubrey Barker Road and Beverly Close, South Rheinfeld Gardens. Travel in comfort and safety with our deluxe fleet of new vehicles and neatly trimmed drivers serving our customers around Georgetown. We deliver cooking gas, Small packages, run errands, and provide minor vehicular roadside assistance, such as jump starts of vehicles, flat tires, spare wheel assistance, and more. Contact us on 218-4982 or 218-4500. G3 Cabs, you can count on us. Hi Guyana, it's your boy Kimo Paul here. Remind you to stay at least one meter away from persons or three feet to avoid contracting the flu or the COVID-19. It is also important that we stay at home and to avoid gatherings of more than five persons. We must all play our part, so let's protect ourselves and our families from COVID-19. We must all play our part. The Ministry of Public Health cannot do this alone. So let's all come together and fight this virus. For further information, check our website, www health.gov.gy or visit the ministry's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube or Twitter page. Oh gosh, what is this? Me son can't read or spell. Stop! Um, zero out of twenty. This is what I can do here. Hi guys, my name is Ms. Kujasek and I'm the senior teacher at the Literature After School Program. Due to the spread of the coronavirus and the need for social distancing, we have moved our in-class learning activities to online via Skype. On the online side, we will be focusing on spelling, formats, reading, and the national grade 6 assessments. For more information, you can inbox us or call us. Contact us on 675-4379. I don't call them, no. Hidden treasures, discovering gems in young minds. This place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Welcome back. 
On Wednesday night, the Ministry of Finance explained that public servants' salaries and pensions are guaranteed for the rest of the year and will be paid as per schedule for 2020. The ministry said in a statement that it was, quote, appalled at the insensitive and cowardly attempt by persons to incite public panic at a time when we are grappling with national and global challenges. We urge that such persons be held accountable and that they refrain from making incendiary and ill-informed statements. We invite you to seek out the ministry with any questions that you may have so that you can be appropriately informed." End quote. The novel coronavirus has forced nations to consider dramatic measures to prevent its spread. This includes partial and full-scale lockdowns. However, in this report, uh, I speak to psychologist and lecturer at the University of Ghana, Will Campbell, who sheds some light on another growing pandemic domestic violence, and what we can do to prevent its spread during these difficult times. Government authorities, women's rights activists, and civil society partners in over a dozen nations have brought attention to an increase in reports of domestic violence during the COVID-19 pandemic. Worse yet, they have seen an increase in the severity of the reports as well. Domestic violence was a global pandemic before the coronavirus. However, psychologist and lecturer at the University of Guyana, Will Campbell, explains that the unprecedented level of stress during this time is fueling the problem. I guess it's a universal rule that if the closer two things are, the greater the possibility of friction between those things. And so um, if there is tension in the home and persons don't have a uh, a way of escaping physically, whether to go to work or whatever. They are in each other's face all day, and the likelihood of, of conflict escalating um, is greater. Um, in addition to that, um, the lockdown, COVID-19, the spread of the COVID-19 and the lockdown has brought with it a number of additional stressors. And um, not everybody deals very well with stress. And so we have people whose lifestyle whose lifestyles have been disrupted. In fact, I think all of us have had our lives disrupted to some extent where we are up. Um, some people are experiencing now a loss of income because they've been laid off because of, 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 of the virus. Um, people are experiencing anxiety. You know, am I going to catch it? Um, is my loved one going to get sick? Um, you know, what is going to happen when all this is over? How long is it going to take? So that anxiety adds to stress levels. And then we have the the whole issue of uncertainty. We like to know that we're in, in control of our lives, and this has, to a large extent, um, made it clear that there are so many things that are beyond our control, and so that adds to the anxiety as well. With this in mind, Campbell gives some advice on how to resolve conflicts that may arise in the home. Minimize the use of alcohol, because um, there is a direct correlation between um, misuse of use of alcohol and uh, domestic violence. Um, I, I think that a lot of us men to need to learn how to walk away. And since we are confined, walking away physically might not um, be something that we are able to do. And if that is the case, then we can learn to walk away emotionally, which means separate yourself emotionally from whatever it is that is stressing you, from maybe this person who is upsetting you. Take your mind to a place. Imagine something else that is more pleasant, so that you can tune out this this, this thing that is um, that is triggering your anger. So that is another thing that we can do. Um, it is important too that we pause long enough when we become angry, when we're triggered. Pause long enough to consider the consequences of our actions. Um, and now that we're in the home, then we may have children around, for example. And if we think about how um, the violence, the conflicts, the negatively impact our children, the generations to come, you know, thinking about those consequences can help us uh, pull back a little bit and and and, and refrain from 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 escalating to the violence. And when all else fails, Campbell suggests that you follow Nat King Cole's advice and just smile. It kind of your brain into think it, it, it sends a message to your brain that you know what this is going to be all right okay um and so when someone triggers you and, and it gets you angry you smile you might not feel like smiling but somehow that that, that action in your face that, that that muscular 
um, movement in your face, just to your brain, you know what, this is going to be okay. On Friday, April 3rd, 2020, Guyana joined much of the world in adopting a curfew, travel restrictions, and other strict measures to combat the spread of the coronavirus, meaning thousands of families around the nation are now confined to their homes. Thus far, Guyana has not seen an appreciable rise in reports of domestic abuse. Nevertheless, the Ministry of Social Protection's Sexual Offenses and Domestic Violence Policy Unit have already set up a hotline and safe space for survivors of domestic abuse during this time. If you or someone you know is being abused, don't wait. Call the 24-hour helpline at 640-1011. A close relative returning home is usually a joyous occasion, but for Esther Knight, a mother of two from Alboy's town, life for her has become terrifying since her brother's return from prison. She spoke to our own Esther Sobers, who tells us that Knight is seeking the public's assistance to get out of her home. All boy song resident Esther Knight is desperately seeking help. She lives in constant fear over her brother's behavior. Knight believes that he is mentally unstable and as such he fears that he may one day physically assault her and her children. However, Knight explains that this began after he was released from prison. I have a brother is um newly out of prison and is um, receiving psychiatric treatment and um, I'm going through uh, um, inside trauma with my children and I we cannot be outside of the house dwelling we have to be in the room lock up like prisoners all my utensils I have to dwell within the bedroom um, he break he break down the door. He made claims of my little son interfering with his stuff and what he will do to the little boy. And because of that, I try to avoid the children outside. They're running to the door. They want they want a little freedom. I cannot I cannot let them out. I myself cannot even go out in a manner to be free because he's walking around me actually in his boxers rolling pins in his hands and it's like I came to fear like fear mm -hmm. he fear he, he, he's trying to he's trying to work a kind of a fear on me Knight is unsure of who to reach out to for help. In the past, she called the police when her home was being vandalized and received no help. In this situation, she called the domestic abuse hotline and again, no help. In both situations, she was given the same answers. Officers cannot intervene because they do not see the severity in the matter. The helpline told me I would have to contact the police. When I contact the police, the police tell me my 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 report I have no value. In to, put it into a nutshell. He is carrying me around, pushing me around, toss, tossing me around. So what are you hoping for in the situation that you say you're living in with your brother who's abusive? I, I, well, I am open in this situation because I will I went on the air already that all the neighbors then break up my windows and they felt me down. So I am open and he came out of prison three months ago and he is an inside attack to me. And I'm hoping that somebody at this point in time and what is going on with COVID-19 and the, do the doors have their heart, it gets more hard and cold for me and my children. And I'm hoping that the police is not doing nothing. They're not looking in. They're treating it like I. they have to wait till a death is at 154 and then they will come. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're waiting on that, but I'm hoping that somebody do something that I remove from this 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 place as soon as possible and see what they could do for me and my, my little children before I lost my life for my children. If you would like to assist Knight, you can call 604-9608. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. 
Stick around. After the break, we have your regional and international news. to Zasco on 50 North Road between Camp and Wellington Streets. Quality products at low cost for every room in your home. 65 and 55 inches high stand 4K smart TVs. Samsung French door fridges. Black and Decker appliances. Queen and King size Canadian made mattresses. German made pressure pots in 5 to 9 liters. 12 piece pot sets, knife sets, cutlery sets and pans, commercial fans. Samsung smart stoves. Canadian made 3 piece recliner sofa sets air fryers and Hamilton Beach hot and cold water dispenser. For that reliable, prudent and courteous traveling experience, your choice is G3 Cabs, located at 228-229 Aubrey Barker Road and Beverly Close South Rental Gardens. Travel in comfort and safety with our deluxe fleet of new vehicles and neatly trim drivers serving our customers around Georgetown. We deliver cooking gas, Small packages run errands and provide minor vehicular roadside assistance such as jump starts of vehicles, flat tires, spare wheel assistance and more. Contact us on 218-4982 or 218-4500. G3 Cabs, you can count on us. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Church Town, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Grade 6 assessments. For more information, you can inbox us or call us. Contact us on 675 I can call them now. Hidden treasures, discovering gems in young minds. Stop the spread of germs that can make you and your friends sick. <laughs> Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you sneeze or cough. <laughs> Throw away that tissue in a bin with a cover. If you do not have a tissue, cough or sneeze into bent elbow. When you are finished, wash your hands thoroughly with clean water and soap while you sing the happy birthday song. If water and soap are not available, use hand sanitizer while you count from 1 to 10 slowly. A message from the Ministry of Public Health and PAHO WHO. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. A shooting incident in Maraval, Trinidad and Tobago on Wednesday night has left one dead and three injured. 
The deceased has been identified as 29-year-old Joe Jordan Bedesi. According to reports, around 9.15 p.m., the deceased was driving a silver Nissan Tita with three Venezuelan nationals seated in the vehicle when they were approached by several men armed with rifles. The gunmen opened fire on the vehicle, striking the occupants about their bodies. The vehicles then crashed a short distance away. The driver died on the scene. The three victims were taken to the hospital where they remain in a critical condition. Trinidad and Tobago Police Service are currently searching for the gunmen and investigations are ongoing. The death toll in the United Kingdom continues to surge with almost a thousand deaths in the past 24 hours. More than 60,000 people have been infected across the country, including Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Al Jazeera's Neve Barker reports. The British Prime Minister's personal battle with COVID-19 continues with him still in intensive care. For the first time in days though, some positive news on Boris Johnson's condition. The latest from the hospital is that the Prime Minister remains in intensive care where his condition is improving. I can also tell you that he has been sitting up in bed and engaging positively with the clinical team. The Prime Minister is not only my colleague and my boss, but also my friend, and my thoughts are with him and his family. The 55-year-old tested positive two weeks ago. He was admitted to hospital on Sunday evening with a persistent high temperature and cough. He was later moved to a specialist unit where he's conscious and has received oxygen. Scientists say the UK is entering the deadliest phase of the outbreak. In East London, an exhibition centre converted into a 500-bed hospital in only nine days has admitted its first patients. In this London hospital, medics are handling a surge in sufferers. But there are worries about the availability of life-saving equipment. We've got enough people. That's difficult because inevitably we've had staff go off. We have currently got enough oxygen. Uh, our current problem today is having enough ITU-grade type ventilators. Some of those admitted are young and fit with no underlying health problems. You don't know how bad it is until it actually hits you. And so I would absolutely urge everybody to listen to the government guidance and stay away from people. This is the hospital where Johnson is under close observation, just across the River Thames from the Houses of Parliament, the scene of so many of Johnson's recent victories. Only a few weeks ago, he was telling journalists how he was still shaking hands with people, some of them patients in hospital. But that was before current restrictions, before the death toll started to accelerate. And now Johnson, like so many others across the UK, have to put their faith in one thing, modern medicine. In his absence, Johnson's designated deputy, Dominic Raab, and the rest of the cabinet are debating when to lift the lockdown that's costing British businesses billions of dollars. After facing criticism for failing to impose restrictions quickly enough, there's now a danger of the government lifting things too soon, a risk known all too well by London's transport workers. 14 have died after contracting COVID-19, most of them bus drivers the price of keeping our cities moving. Neve Barker, Al Jazeera, London. U.S. President Donald Trump has again criticized the World Health Organization, which is leading the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Al Jazeera's Mike Hanna reports. A long line of ambulances queued outside a New York hospital, and officials say the peak of the pandemic has still not been reached. It's not expected to hit the city for several more days. Against the backdrop of the most deadly day since the virus hit the US, President Trump continued his feud with the World Health Organization, accusing it of initially minimizing the threat of the virus and responding sharply to that agency's director general, who said that politicizing the virus could lead to more body bags. When you say more body bags, I think we would have done, uh, and he would have been much better serving the people that he's supposed to serve if they gave a correct analysis. I mean, everything was, I said, China-centric. Everything was going to be fine, no human to human, uh, keep the borders open. He wanted me to keep the borders open. I closed the borders despite him, and that was a hard decision to make at the time. We were all together. We made a decision against 
the World Health Organization. I can't believe he's talking about politics when look at the relationship they have to China. So China spends 42 million, we spend 450 million, and everything seems to be China's way. That's not right. It's not fair to us. And honestly, it's not fair to the world. At this point, we're reevaluating our, our funding with respect to the World Health Organization. Now, this is very consistent with what President Trump said since the beginning of his campaign. Organizations have to work. They have to deliver the outcomes for which they were intended. President Trump continued to endorse the use of the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine, ignoring the warning by many specialists that unsourced medical advice could prove dangerous. Zinc, they say, zinc. You should add zinc. Now, it's all has to be recommended by doctors, physicians. But they say zinc. I want to throw that out there because that's where they seem to be having the best uh, result. And while the president was volunteering anecdotal medical advice, New York City continued its preparations for what is to come. Volunteers setting up a field hospital in a downtown church, hoping against all predictions that it will not be needed. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington. And now for your three-day weather forecast. That's all for this edition of Headline News Update. Tune in Tuesday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Also visit our website at headlinenewsgana.com for all the news we couldn't fit in the newscast. Until then, have a great Easter weekend.